Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. We appreciate you uh, joining us on this semi-holiday. Today we're going to talk a little bit about photometrics in general, how to read a photometric layout, and the hot topic of the day, incumbent technologies versus LED technologies. Now, the example that we're focusing on today is the incumbent is metal halide, various wattages, and the fixture style that we've chose, which is kind of a high bar, frankly, which is dark skies compatible wall packs, which is also a very hot item these days. And I'd like to introduce you all to Mr. David Delgado, who's joined us today. You will see various lighting layouts throughout our presentation. David, our technical support specialist on the product marketing team, does the lighting layouts for MaxLight. If anyone needs to have lighting layouts done for their particular application, that is a service that we provide, and Mr. Delgado would be the actual individual doing that for you. And we asked David to join us today so that if anyone had any specific questions or highly technical questions or even basic questions about lighting layouts, IES files in general, and about the type of technical support that MaxLight offers, Feel free to ask him the question. You can use your text box right below your screen, and David will reply to you live as you ask your questions. Now, for any questions that you might direct towards myself that we don't cover or direct towards David that uh, we're not able to answer today, we will commit to getting out the full list of questions and answers out to everyone, let's say, by early next week due to the holiday season. Most of you who are... Uh, coming back over and over know that we generally send that out within the first day or two. So with all of that, again, thank you for joining and let's get started. So what we're going to cover today are photometric lighting layouts and how to interpret them and how to understand what you're looking at. Then we're going to use the examples I mentioned earlier, metal halide versus LED dark skies compliant wall packs and the energy impact, as well as the uh, labor and materials impact. And, and I should say here that there's a lot of assumptions that are made about labor, and that varies greatly around the country. And all the assumptions that I made about kilowatt hours, labor rates, material rates, that's all obvious and part of the formulas. And, and you should know also that we will be sending you all of these LED layouts, as well as the spreadsheets used to calculate these paybacks so that you can use them either as a tool, look at the formulas and how they work, and you know, feel free to use them to calculate labor, energy, and materials for your other projects. So the first slide that we'd like to share with you, this is just a, a random sample of what's called a plan view. In this case, it's a top view. It could be you know, a view from the east or the west or you know, anything else, but generally they're a top view. In this particular case, we have a 25-foot spacing between the fixtures. The scale here is one inch represents eight feet on the job site. And this gives you an idea of where the, uh, the foot candles at specific points in your application. We can also do this at uh, different heights. In this case, it's outdoor. It's a parking lot or something like that. These are wall packs. The individual foot candle readings that you see at various spots, those are at ground level. Maybe in a factory environment, we would do 36 inches off the floor, I think is the uh, IES recommendation. And generally, depending on the application, we will use the IES recommendation for height. This is known as a luminaire schedule. This is more or less the summary of the product, the lighting product that's being used in the, in the layout. So in this particular case, we have a symbol and a letter that represents the light fixtures, the total number of light fixtures that are used in this particular layout, the catalog number. This is a max light model number for a 40 watt, 5,000 Kelvin wall pack. I see David added some additional information that this was, I think I'm interpreting this as uh, 20 feet off the ground. A brief description of the fixture, a little bit about the lamp or the light source within the fixture, in this case, LED. The IES file, MaxLight generates IES files or has generated for us at third party laboratories IES files for all of our LED and other commercial products. The type of lumens that we're looking at should always be absolute. LLF, for those of you not familiar with that, this is known as the luminaire light loss factor. 
in this particular case, what we're saying is that about 5% of the light generated by this light source in this fixture actually never leaves the fixture. And this is something that is a variable, let's say. And for fluorescent, for instance, I think it would be a bit lower than that. For other light sources, it varies. And the watts. And always keep in mind, the IES file should reveal the actual wattage. For instance, in my model number, in the MaxLight model number for this wall pack, it is implied it's a 40 watt, but in this particular case, it is actually measured at 39.8 watts. That's something that you should look at. I have found that, that is a huge fudge factor where, you know, just to use general numbers, a 100 watt fixture, when you look at the IES file, might be 108, 110, 112 watts. So, you know, you have to calculate that into your efficacy and efficiencies. The next graph that you might be familiar with that comes with almost every lighting layout is the luminaire location graph. And this is basically showing you in this particular layout that had five fixtures, where the fixtures are based on an XYZ plot. So uh, just to, to show that the first fixture is 0.1, it's 20 feet high. The next one is 25 feet from that point at the same height and so on. So this is actually used in a, in a grid style, three dimensional, including the height for determining where the fixtures have to be installed in order to meet the foot candles that we share with you. Now the statistics. Statistics are basically the final summary in a sense that, well, let's go through it. Uh, we have a description of where this is, walkway, parking lot, something like that. It's the facade of a building. The symbol that represents this particular fixture. The average foot candles throughout the plotted area, in this case 1.6. The maximum foot candles and the minimum, 3.2 versus 1. That gives us a min-max ratio, max-min ratio of 3.2 to 1. That's not bad. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen 16, 18 to 1. And the average to minimum, 1.6 to 1, is also very good. So it's really a way to take that visualization of all those foot candle readings at, at specific spots throughout the application and summarize it so that you can see the high lows and the averages throughout. And that's really much more important than this specific spot or that specific spot. Power density statistics. This is for those of you interested in Ezra and taking advantage of the tax rebates concerning uh, lighting efficiencies and then also uh, people looking towards LEED certifications and the like. This is a very important statistic for you. In this particular case, what we're showing is that we're using one-tenth of a watt per square foot. And that's phenomenal. That's excellent. And that's something to boast about and certainly is a contribution towards your overall energy efficiency for that particular location. So I, I hope with that basic understanding of how lighting layouts are done and the information that's brought back to you, uh, I hope that uh, helped you out. And I hope that that's something that you can use going forward. And a quick reminder, we'll send you the LED lighting layouts uh, just to show you the type of information you get and the format that it's in when you ask Max Light and Mr. Delgado to do a lighting layout for you. So now we're going to get into some real hard numbers. We're going to look at LED versus metal halide. And at the very last minute, Blake Adams, our producer, was able to throw this slide in. And this is just for the probably very few of you who don't know about the actual wattage versus the implied wattage on metal halide fixtures. So the bottom line is that when you use a 50 watt or a 400 watt metal halide lamp, that lamp is 50 or 400 watts, but when it's used with a full metal halide system, including the ballast, you'll find that there's 15 plus percent of uh, what they call ballast loss. The example here, 400 watts, is actually consuming about 455, 460 watts in total. I've seen some systems that are as little as 430, some systems as high as pushing 470. It does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. I believe that the variation is within the ballast, not so much the lamp. And I use pretty much 15% across the board here. So uh, where my numbers have come from, I will always share with you. So you'll see that when I'm using the ROI calculations, I'm using the actual wattage consumed as opposed to the implied wattage or the lamp wattage. Now the very first example that we're going to look at together here is a 20 watt LED wall pack, dark skies compliant, versus a 50 watt metal halide wall pack, dark skies compliant. 
Now, I know that that print is quite small and fine, but you'll notice that the power density here is about one-tenth of a watt per square foot, which is excellent. We have an average foot candle reading throughout the specified area of about two foot candles, which is fantastic. And it looks like we've got a forward throw of at least 15 feet. So that's some quick basics that you can get out of this. But let's now compare it quickly to the 50 watt metal halide. So here what we've got is about four tenths of a watt or four times the power to light the same square foot. So from an efficiency point of view, this is not that desirable. Notice that the average to minimum foot candle ratio was not quite as good as the what the LED was. Our total watts here on a on a 50 watt happens to be 85 watts and luminaire light loss factor of 0.72. So this is why we're taking these out every day. This this is not so efficient. Now let's look at it a little bit side by side. So you can see clearly the 50 watt metal halide has slightly higher lumens throughout, but both meet the minimum and then some. And the min to average ratio, min to max ratio on the 20 watt is much more favorable, much more evenly lit. So if you accept that the light level is comparable and equal, we move on to the next step. So what I've done here for no particular reason, I used 58 watts for our 50 total power. I chose 12 cents as a kilowatt hour. As I travel around the country, I hear as little as six and seven cents in areas like parts of Eastern Pennsylvania and as much as 20 cents in Long Island, New York, and Southern California, Northern California. So that is a variable that when you get this spreadsheet, you can change to you know, see your own scenarios. And the uh, hours per day. I chose 12 hours because this is a wall pack on average across the country. I realize some places have more daylight and, than others, but I just chose 12 for the example to share with you here today. So you know the cost per month per fixture, bottom line, on a 50-watt Metal halide is about 250 a month, given these particular assumptions. And for a 20 watt under the same assumptions, it's less than a dollar. When we retrofit 20 pieces, it's just an arbitrary number. Your location might have six pieces, it might have 600 pieces. But in this scenario, we're looking at a, about $33 per month savings. And that's only energy, by the way.